Next, let us study another scenario. Here we want to find out what is the fraction of empty bins in the balls and bins model. And here we go back to the general case when there are n balls. So the number of balls may not be equal to the number of bins n. So in order to find out what is the fraction of empty bins, let us see. So we can compute the probability that bin 1 is empty to be equal to this one. 1 minus 1 over n, this term to the power n. So this is very simple. In order for bin 1 to be empty, each of these n balls has to be thrown in, into some other bins. So the chance for the first ball to be thrown into some other bin is 1 minus 1 over n. And, and this happens for each of the balls. So as a result, the corresponding probability will be 1 minus 1 over n to the power n. Now, when n is very, very large, then 1 over n will be a very, very small value. And this term actually is very, very close to e to the power minus m over n. The reason is that 1 minus 1 over n will be very close to e to the power minus 1 over n. So as a result, the total of this part will be equal to e to the power minus m over n. And in that case, by linearity of expectation, we will find out that the expected value of the number of bins will be equal to the chance that the first bin is empty plus the chance that the second bin is empty and so on and so forth because each of them represents the expected value of a certain bin is empty. So by linearity of expectation, expected number of empty bins will be roughly n times e to the power minus m over n. And if we want to get back to the fraction of empty bins, then we divide the expected value of number of empty bins by n, so we will get that it is roughly e to the power minus m over n. Next, let us study a very similar problem. This time, we want to find out what is the fraction of bins that has exactly R balls. We assume that this R is some small constant, which is much, much smaller than M or N. So we use the similar approach. We can find out the probability that bin 1 has exactly R balls to be this one. So there are M choose R ways to select R balls. And for each particular way, these R balls has to be thrown into bin 1, so it happens with probability 1 over n to the power R. But on the other hand, for the remaining n minus R balls, they have to be in some other bins. So this happens with probability 1 minus 1 over n to the power n minus R. Now again, when n is very large, then we will find out that we will find out that this value 1 minus 1 over m to the power m minus r is close to e to the power minus m over n. Now notice that we also assume that m is very large. So in that case the r is not very comparable. So in that case this whole term can be approximated by e to the power minus m over n. And for this term it can be approximated as m to the power r divided by r factorial. And this term, it is 1 over, the, and for this term, it is just 1 over n to the power r. So after combining this one with this one, we get m over n, this term, to the power r divided by r factorial. So this is the probability, or this is a rough approximation of the probability that bin 1 has exactly r balls. And also, this will be the same as the expected fraction of bins with exactly R balls. Now, notice that we have an interesting term. So this is e to the power minus m over n multiplied by m over n to the power r divided by r factorial. 
the term m over n here is actually special. This m over n is the expected number of balls in each bin. So this term here that we see when we have r here will be e to the power minus of the expected value multiplied by the expected value to the power r and then divided by r factorial. Now actually this form gives us the motivation to study the following random variable which we call the Poisson random variable. The definition of this Poisson random variable is like this. Suppose that x is a Poisson random variable with parameter mu so that we can denote this fact by x which is a Poisson random variable with parameter mu. This variable will take on values r equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, such that the probability that x is equal to a specific value of r is equal to e to the power minus mu times mu to the power r divided by r factorial. So here we require that this parameter mu is greater than 0. Okay. So this is the definition of a Poisson random variable. And before we move on, let us first check that the distribution of the values is actually a valid distribution. We want to show that the probability of x is equal to 0 plus the probability of x is equal to 1 plus the probability of x is equal to and so on and so forth, they should add up to 1 so that it is a valid probability distribution. Okay, so we start with the checking. So by definition, probability of x is equal to 0 will be e to the power minus mu. Okay, we go back here. It will be e to the power minus mu times mu to the power 0, which is 1, divided by 0 factorial, which is also 1. So e to the power minus mu multiplied by 1 will be the probability of x is equal to 0. And then for x is equal to 1, the probability is e to the power minus mu multiplied by mu to the power 1 divided by 1 factorial. And for this one, it is e to the power minus mu multiplied by mu squared divided by 2 factorial, and so on and so forth. But the latter part here, it has infinite terms to be added. It turns out that it is the Taylor expansion of e to the power mu. So, so as a result, this equality can be written as e to the power minus mu times e to the power mu, which is equal to 1. Now notice that each of these probability here is defined and that they are also greater than zero as well, right? So this is a valid probability distribution. Okay, now, whenever we define a new type of random variable, let us study the expected value or the moment generating function and also the churn of bounds for them. So here, suppose that x is a Poisson random variable with parameter mu, and we want to show that the expected value of x is equal to mu. The proof is very straightforward. We are using the definition and prove this directly. So the expected value of x will be equal to the summation of all the possible values that x can take on, so summation of r, weighted by the corresponding probability that x is equal to r. So this is the formula. So by doing this, so we have the summation of r multiplied by e to the power minus mu multiplied by mu to the power r divided by r factorial. We should sum this for all the possible r's that x can take on. So originally, we should sum for everything from r greater than or equal to 0. But here, when we see that when r is equal to 0, the term here that corresponds to that one will be 0. So for the summation, we may as well start from r greater than 0 as well. So in that case, when r is defined to be greater than 0, something nice could happen because this r can be cancelled with the r term inside this r factorial. So after cancellation or after moving things around, we will move e to the power minus mu outside we will move a copy of mu outside, so we get mu times e to the power minus mu. And after that, this r will be cancelled with 
one of the r here in the r factorial. So in that case, we will have r minus 1 factorial remaining, and we will have mu to the power r minus 1 as the numerator. Now, when you look at this term by term, we will see that this is actually, again, the Taylor expansion of e to the power mu. So in that case, we can replace this shaded part to be e to the power minus mu here. And after doing some cancellation, we will get that this is equal to mu as we want. So the expected value of a Poisson random variable is indeed the corresponding parameter. Now another interesting fact about Poisson random variable is that when we are summing independent Poisson random variables, so let's say x is a Poisson random variable with parameter mu, and y is another Poisson random variable with parameter lambda, and then these two are independent, then the summation of them, x plus y, will interestingly be another Poisson random variable, and the parameter will be mu plus lambda. So the parameter is easy to remember because mu is the expected value of x, lambda is the expected value of y, then the expected value of x plus y will be mu plus lambda. And if somehow x plus lambda and x plus y, it turns out that it is also a Poisson random variable, then the parameter must be mu plus lambda. Okay. So let's see how we prove this theorem. So in particular, we want to show that the probability of x plus y is equal to r will be in the corresponding form, e to the power minus of the expected value times the expected value to the power r divided by r factorial. If somehow we can show that this probability is equal to this one, then we are done. And then how do we show this? We are going to show this by brute force and somehow make use of the binomial expansion. So this by definition is the chance for x plus y is equal to r is equal to, so this is like the rule of sum, so there are different cases where x plus y is equal to r. It could be x is equal to 0, y is equal to r, x is equal to 1, y is equal to r minus 1, and so on and so forth. So we are going to sum for all the possible values of k, the chance that x is equal to k multiplied by the chance that y is equal to r minus k. So this is the total probability, right? So, so after that, then we just go back to the definition of what is the chance for x is equal to k. So this is the value. And what is the chance that y is equal to r minus k? And it is the value. Okay. Now some terms can be combined at this point. We will have e to the power minus mu, e to the power minus lambda. So we take it out we will have e to the power minus bracket of mu plus lambda. And then, and then all the terms are now combined. You will have mu to the power k, lambda to the power r minus k written here, and then we have a k factorial, r minus k factorial written here. Now notice that this term is related to the term r choose k. So in particular, we want to make this into r choose k by multiplying r factorial to this term. When we multiply r factorial to this term, then we are going to cancel the effect by dividing it by r factorial outside. So we can change this particular term into r choose k, so that we are dividing r factorial outside for the balancing. So we will have r choose k multiplied by mu to the power k multiplied by lambda to the power r minus k. And then here, this is nothing special. This is the binomial expansion of mu plus lambda to the power r. So that's why we can replace the shaded part into this part. And in the end, we get the desired form. So here, we have proven that sum of two independent Poisson random variable is also a Poisson random variable. So we have an easy corollary sum of any number of independent Poisson random variables is also a Poisson random variable. Yeah, because sum of any two is a Poisson, so we get a Poisson. And then when we add the third one, then it is sum of two new Poisson, right? 
so it is also a Poisson, and so on and so forth. And the parameter you can you can find it out easily. And next, let us analyze the moment generating function of a Poisson random variable. Now, unlike the previous random variable that we have studied here, we have an exact form of the moment generating function of this Poisson random variable. So we let x to be a Poisson random variable with parameter mu, then its moment generating function will be e to the power mu multiplied by e to the power t minus 1. So how do we show this? So again, we show this by brute force. So the moment generating function for x will be equal to the expected value of e to the power tx. So the expected value of this one will be equal to e to the power tr for each possible r weighted by the probability that this x is equal to r. So this is the probability that x is equal to r. So this is actually by definition of the expected value. And we do some little cancellation. So you have e to the power minus mu, we take it outside. And then we combine e to the power tr with mu to the power r into e to the power t times mu to the power r. And then we will find that this term here is actually the Taylor expansion of e to the power e t mu. And when this one is multiplied by e to the power minus mu, then we get the, the result e to the power mu bracket e to the power t minus 1 as we want. So this is the moment generating function of a Poisson random variable. Now once we have the moment generating function, we can get the churn of bounds easily. So here, let us write down the corresponding churn of bounds for a Poisson random variable. Let's say big Y represents a Poisson random variable with parameter mu. Then for any value of x greater than the mean value, the chance that y is greater than or equal to this x is less than or equal to e to the power minus mu multiplied by e mu over x to the power x. And on the other hand, so, so this one is the turn of bounds for the right tail. And for the left tail, when we consider a certain value x which is less than the mean value, the chance that y is less than or equal to x will be less than or equal to the same form, e to the power minus mu multiplied by e mu over x to the power x. So this is actually very simple and easily derived. So we will leave this as an exercise for you. That's the end for this lecture. Thank you.